Bob, if Finland and Sweden do go forward in joining NATO, just how big of a development would that be? Well, it's, it's enormous. You know, these, these are two countries that have been, up until now, effectively neutral, although it is true that after the, at the end of the Cold War, uh, Finland, Finland did adjust its policy. Uh, but neither have been a me member of NATO. To put this in context, Swe Sweden has been a non-aligned country, a neutral country, for the best part of 200 years. Less, less time for Finland. Finland's been in that position since, effectively since 1939, when it was at war for three months with the Soviet Union, lost 10% of its territory. Uh, with the end of the Cold War, it started to adjust its position. It's cooperated extensively, as has Sweden, with, with NATO. Uh, both of them are EU countries. Uh, but neither up until this stage have taken this step. And if you bear in mind that just a few months ago, in other words, before Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, only 20-25% of the population of Finland was talking about joining NATO as being a good idea. Uh, and the Swedish defence minister said it would never happen. And yet here we are just a few months down the line after that invasion uh, of Ukraine and everything has changed. And this has changed quite obviously because of that unprovoked, unjustified attack by, by uh, Russia on Ukraine. As Boris Johnson, who was in both countries uh, just yesterday said that this changes the reality on, on the ground in, the, in, in these two countries, in the region. That is why they're taking this step. They're taking it because they're fearful of what Russia might do next. Russia has already shown it's ready to invade a smaller, uh, less heavily defended country for no good reason. It could happen, at least according to the logic being used by the Finns and the Swedes, to them as well. So the fact that they're making this move is already a huge deal, but how likely is it, Rob, that this is actually going to go forward? Well, you know, as, as you said in your introduction to this, already uh, the, the Finns have made an announcement, a joint statement by uh, President Niemista uh, and Prime Minister San Sanomarin that they are going to go ahead with this. Uh, that's not the end of the story. Parliament has to discuss it as well this weekend. But given the fact that there is a big majority in the Finnish parliament in favour of entering uh, of applying to, jo to join NATO, it's almost certain that this is going to go ahead, given to the fact that such a large part of the population, 75% now, has said that it's in favour uh, of joining NATO. The likelihood, too, is that this weekend the Swedes will discuss it. They'll come to a similar position. There's a majority in favour of uh, making the application in the Swedish parliament. It's very likely that next week, when the Finnish president, Niemista, goes to Sweden, uh, that there will be a joint statement in which they'll make an application to, to join NATO. There is a little bit of doubt, you know, in their minds perhaps, because there's a fear factor involved in here, and there's the weight of tradition that I've been talking about. These are two countries that have been, uh, been non-aligned for a long time. The fear factor is very strong, and one of the reasons why is that there will be a hiatus between applying to join NATO and, and, and becoming part of NATO. When that Article 5, which obliges all NATO members to come to the defence of another member that's been attacked, will come into operation. Until then, it it doesn't apply. But several members of NATO have said that they will provide security uh, to Finland and Sweden should they apply. And just uh, 24 hours ago, we had uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Sweden and in Finland talking about a self -defense, uh, signing a self-defence pact between the, their, their three countries. So, you know, the, the, the assurances are there in place now, and it's almost certain, uh, as certain as can be at this stage, that this is going to go ahead. Russia, though, has warned of serious consequences. What kind of a reaction can we expect from them as this moves forward? Yeah, well, I mean, this is a really big deal for the Russians, you know, because uh, all, all of a sudden their shared border with, with NATO becomes massively bigger. If you look at this map here, you can see that red line there. That's the border between Finland uh, and Russia. Hitherto, uh, the border, borders of NATO with, with, uh, with Russia have been quite small. Up in the north there, if you look up, up here, that's the border of Norway with, uh, with Russia. And down here too, with two Baltic countries, uh, Estonia and Latvia, and then Lithuania here has this border, uh, as does Poland, uh, with Kaliningrad region in Russia. So that border makes it enormously... Uh, puts enormous pressure on Russia. And it's achieved this through uh, actions of its own taking. If it had not invaded Ukraine, uh, 
uh, because it feared that, so it said, that Ukraine was going to join NATO, although in reality this is not a prospect that was going to happen uh, in, in our foreseeable lifetimes. Uh, it has made it almost certain now that these two countries are going to join uh, NATO. And the, the, the security equation between NATO and Russia changes as a consequence. Russia now has NATO on its doorstep, much closer to, to its capital, Moscow, uh, in a way which was entirely unnecessary. If that invasion had not taken place, there is no doubt uh, that Finland and Sweden would not be considering joining NATO now.